Here we go. Uh, morning. Morning. <laughs> Um, wrinkly time again. Uh, we're in the um, in the playroom. Uh, haven't really got that much done. Uh, just uh, the last week or so, because it's been uh, springtime. Springtime. And as you can see, uh, well, we've been out in the garden. You can't see that, but what you can see is that I've not even had <laughs> not even had time for oh dear I've not even had time for a shave <laughs> uh, well it's because the razor's bust actually so we're waiting for a new one what have I done what have I done what have I done since you've been here right uh, first thing I did uh, was I cut out that bit of the uh, uh, the tail, uh, the uh, elevator, burp, 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 burp. Um, just made sure that that's still uh, solid obviously after I cut this uh, middle section out, that's fine, it's good stuff. Uh, as far as the rudder goes, I've cut a wee slot in the rudder. Uh, the wee slot is for uh, let me just show you just sit there a while right one of these yeah. which I bought special you can see it can you see it Harry? yep okay I'll just hold it up against a piece of wood so you can see it a bit better one of those which is uh, it's like a horn uh, but it's for a pull pull system, okay? So that will fit in to the slot there and be glued in, epoxied in uh, for the pull pull rudder system, which uh, I'm going to put on this. I've decided that the rudder will be pull pull, the elevator I think will just be a push rod. I'll show you why in a tick. Okay, what I have done is I've just put a little bit of uh, ply on the end, on the edges there, uh, just to make certain that the uh, pull pull little doofer doesn't get pull pulled out after it's been epoxied in. And then we've got some, I bought a load of. Uh, uh, pull pull wires which are all different sizes diameters basically of wire and also diameters of uh, little screwy things that uh, so some of them are for the larger plane downstairs ready uh, some of them are so, so we've got three mil screws two mil screws heat shrink tube in and some aluminium uh, tubes uh, which will pinch up the uh, the cable once it's been fitted. Right, that's, that's about all the unboxing I'm going to do. Well, it's not actually unboxing, is it? Uh, right, with the... I've got so much stuff I need to just make certain it don't get lost amongst all the other shite. Right. Zip. Sorry Harry. That got you off your on your toes, didn't it? Fuselage. Fuselage. What have we done so far on the fuselage? I'll tell you what, I'll put the fuselage down on the on the bench so that Harry can uh, focus on it. I'll put it around that way. So you can see what it's doing. So much stuff going to move. Right, as you can see, I've got one of the servos in, and this servo will be the one 
which will do the pull pull system. So the height of that servo I've checked out with a straight edge is fine for exiting the two slots we've got each side of the back end of the plane. Okay. So they're screwed, semi-screwed at the moment, onto hardwood rails. Uh, and the wire should go straight. It will cross over. So the left-hand side of that will go to the right-hand side there, and the right-hand will go to the left-hand, I think. We'll see how it goes. Should line up. Now, the two servos, which we're going to use, the other one for the rudder, is going to have to be at a different height, of course, because the outlet for that is higher on the other side, one hit on the other side. So that I've put in a couple of hardwood rails. I've made up a base here, which will fit in on top of there. Now the thing about that is that it will be screwed to the hardwood rails that I've already glued in so that I can access, if needs must, the servo underneath if it goes wrong. The uh, adjusters for the pull-pull system I should put on the tail end. That way I can do an adjustment outside of the aeroplane. Okay. Now all this has to be done, or I reckon anyway, it's easier to be done, isn't it? Before we do the covering. Uh, the battery box I've made. Uh, I've bought a battery. It's uh, one of those Hobby King things. God knows what it's like. Uh, cheap, cheerful, horrible. We'll see. Uh, it will be Velcroed, okay. And then that will fit in there. Okay. Uh, it fits uh, down here onto a stop at the bottom so it's not going anywhere but it'll be velcroed up here okay so pop velcro it in the wires will then come over the top into the speed controller which will be in this area here so that the air can come in comes in cools the speed controller this is all the thought of it and what I've also started to make is the cowling on the front, so that will be a fixed part of the cowling. Make certain when you do that that you still have plenty of room to pull out your battery, obviously. Uh, and then the cowling will be here, over the top, same kind of shape, uh, with uh, maybe one three formers fitted with a pin in the front and a couple of magnets which I've bought uh, yeah magnets magnets uh, just stay there a minute there's some magnets seem to have stuck themselves together for some reason or other <laughs> uh, right uh, magnets Oh, Chinese magnets, that's why. Okay, so we have a couple of Chinese magnets there. Pin at the front, hold it down. Finished uh, with your flight. Off it comes. Um, and disconnect. I do have a switch. don't know two minds whether to fit it, a switch or not. Because we can actually uh, get to the... Um, we can get to the battery connector and pull it out if it's not too much hassle quite easily. Uh, um, what else? What else? We need to start uh, covering things, I think. Uh, I've done all the, pardon me, sanding on the back end tail feathers so apparently they're cool tail feathers done all the sanding on those uh, this needs finishing obviously 
we need to be looking at uh, filling in the uh, the bottom here that will be filled in I haven't filled that in yet and obviously we haven't covered it yet uh, that's a bolster grain going that way filling and then sanded I've started sanding the sides with my belt sander until my Chinese um, sanding strip party company so I'm finishing it off by hand with a block of cork so that, that will be finished by hand because um, I can't be asked to go to the shop to get a new sanding belt for it just to do that little bit I've done the bulk of it uh, we need to uh, what else do we need to do uh, we need to go through all the hardware which I haven't done uh, I've got all the hardware for it uh, you know, motors and actually bought uh, what did I buy actually bought uh, bum, bum, bum. a servo tester the other day so we'll have a go with that I also bought a prop balancer we'll have a go with that I've not used these things before uh, always just chucked a servo in and because I've always bought expensive servos high techs or, uh, or Futabas or somebody like that uh, we, we come in on to using these uh, cheapy cheapy made in Taiwan made in Hextronics I don't know uh, before you put the whole thing together you might as well test them just to make absolutely certain they actually do what they say they do on the box uh, yeah so I'll see you next time I'll see you next time um, and we may have some information may have some information about another YouTube uh, channel. channel channel the very word I was looking for Harry thank you very much indeed um, to do with wrinkly cycling <laughs> um, yeah okay what what do they call that stuff your trousers are made out of when you go cycling not neoprene is it no you know what I mean yeah yeah I've got a pair of uh, tights tights no not tights no it's kind of shorts with big asses, <laughs> big padded butts so uh, yeah I could try and a pair I've got a pair of those I could try on those it's um oh god I can't remember the word anyway um you see loads of uh, 70 year olds here flying along the road wearing them uh, I'm sure it's not neoprene something else uh, uh, yeah may do another may do another video a channel for that and come the autumn uh, probably a video channel for uh, building the model railway I hope we get more bloody viewers than we got for this <coughs> um, <laughs> I think it's a bit specialist this one isn't it I tell you what if I was unboxing plastic ruddy aeroplanes every day I'd get 1200 views per box um, what is it I don't know what's gone wrong with the world uh, never mind that's my moment for the day I'll see you oh, I'll finish my tea first Hang on. I promise not to choke on it this time <coughs> That wasn't me coughing, by the way. Well, not a ventriloquist. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. See you next time. Bye bye. I forgot a bit. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Right. Right. What are we doing? Wings. Of course, I finished the wings. Right. Okay. Ooh, there he goes now 
I've put the wing tips on together with the uh, whatever they call them uh, wing tip ribs. Uh, you'll notice from here uh, if you get that at a right angle that the uh, wing tip isn't flush with the bottom of the wing. It's it's at a slight angle where it comes up to meet the at the back edge at the trailing edge it meets the trailing edge okay and we've put that little bit of uh, wood on the trailing edge there that's uh, yet I don't know have I sanded it off yeah I've just rounded it off a bit that's fine I reckon uh, the that's the trailing edge uh, keep focused on that the leading edge of the wing tip is centralized around the round leading edge of the wing okay I cheated and I bought some leading edge okay glued that on because I do find that the leading edge that you buy is nice and hard hard bolster very very hard bolster uh, it's uh, it's not bad stuff uh, you need a nice hard leading edge okay so that is the wing complete all done ready to be just finished sanding just to be crashed yeah and then crashed i uh, need to sand it a few little bits need to be filled not much at all really which makes a change uh so we would use a little bit of lightweight filler on that Oh, it seems fairly solid it's not flexible at all with the d-box section what they call the d-box section at the front which is the um, this area here which is uh, covered with the um, the bolster top and bottom it forms a kind of a letter d so it's a d-box section uh, it means that you don't have to have any spars in there and it makes it uh, an extremely solid piece of kit I found this uh, easy-ish to build, easy-ish, maybe not a first time builder's job, uh, but easy-ish. If you're a first time builder, go out and buy a kit, go out and buy a Ben Buckle kit, that's what you need, uh, especially the Junior 60, because he gives you step by step instructions on how to do everything, step by step. And all the difficult bits are cut out for you. A nice plane, actually. Um, junior 60. Uh, oh, one thing I did do was I put a little bit of a triangular gusset in between two of these ribs just to hold it a bit firmer. Uh, if you can see it. Can you see that? Yep. yep. Okay, got that. Because I still think it's a bit... Oof, I don't know. If you if land on a, <laughs> on a wing tip, <laughs> which uh, in the potato field, which is what I have been known to do. Um, anyway, yeah, that's the bit I forgot. So I haven't forgotten it now. There's no more bits I haven't remembered. No more bits that I forgot. Uh, so that's it. Uh, yep. Yeah, see you next week. Uh, no, not what next time. Whatever that is. Bye.